Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another Five Good Minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're going to begin uh, our conversation about Paul, the Apostle, and his uh, relationship, his encounters with Jesus. And we'll start today by talking about Paul's biography uh, and what we know up to the point at which he meets Jesus uh, on the Damascus Road. Uh, we know quite a lot, actually. We have more biographical information about Paul than any other character in the New Testament except for Jesus himself, mostly because the man who says, I forget everything in the past, tells it to us over and over and over again because his story is important, uh, and it is the story of grace, and it is a reminder to all of us that if Paul can be saved, anybody can be saved, something that he himself says in 1 Timothy chapter 1. Well, um, the Apostle Paul is from the city of Tarsus. That's on the southern coast of Turkey. As we learn uh, throughout the book of Acts, the Apostle Paul is not only a Jew and not only a Pharisee, um, but he is also a Roman citizen. Uh, there weren't many ways for Jews to become Roman citizens. Uh, one's family would have had to have performed a very important service for the Roman government, uh, or his father perhaps was Roman, but I, I seriously doubt that uh, because one is a Jew matrilineally, which we learn of, uh, in the New Testament when we talk about Timothy, whose father was Greek, but whose mother was Jewish. Um, so one wonders how the family, this Jewish family, observant Jewish family, became Roman citizens. But citizenship was so necessary, highly prized, such an asset for any person living in the Mediterranean world to have. Uh, not many people at this time who were not Italian, who were not Latin, were not citizens, but Paul was a citizen. We know <clears throat> from what he tells us in Galatians and, uh, and, uh, and elsewhere uh, that he went to school in Jerusalem at the great synagogue he is a devotee of uh, Gamaliel, um, and he was one of the great rabbis of all times. In other words, he had the best Jewish education uh, available at the time. And he tells us, as he does several places, but especially in Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 through 14, that he advanced farther than any of his peers. Um, that's interesting to me. No one proved as zealous as Paul. He says so himself, and we see that. In Acts chapter 7, 8, and 9, he's there giving tacit approval of the Sanhedrin when Stephen is stoned in chapter 7. He is the leader of the onslaught of persecution against Christians that scatter Christians from the city of Jerusalem in chapter 8. And at the beginning of chapter 9, he goes to the high priest and gets letters of permission to go all the way north to Damascus, more than 100 miles away, and to do violence to and to arrest Christians. Uh, simply for being Christians. There's a hatred of Christianity and a, a zealousness with Paul. Uh, one wonders where that comes from. And I think it comes from just more his per than his personality, although he has a very strong and at times volatile personality. I think it probably comes from the fact that he is an outsider, that he's not from Judea, that he did not grow up um, you know, in Palestine, that he's from the provinces, and yet he's smarter than any of the rest of them. And I think he feels like he has to be twice as good and twice as zealous to be taken seriously. We also know from Paul's um, the quotations of the, Jew, of the Roman uh, poets, the Roman philosophers, and his use of them, uh, and we'll talk more about this when we talk about his conversion uh, tomorrow, um, we, um, we learn uh, that he has had a classical education as well, that, that, that he can quote Euripides, he can quote Meander, he can quote, you know, um, and, and not only quote them, but he's well versed in, um, in their philosophy. That's why he, when he's on the Areopagus, not only is he the smartest rabbi in the room, he's the smartest philosopher in Athens. And, uh, and really, just in a very deliberate fashion, logical fashion, deals uh, with, uh, with the Greek philosophers in Acts chapter 17. And he's also a man with, um, with, with a vocation. 
He was trained as a worker in large pieces of leather. We, we call him a tent maker. He would have made tents, awnings. These things would have been in demand by the army, by any um, merchant. Um, you know, the, the, the large pieces of cloth uh, that, that we have available to us would have been harder to come by then. Um, um, it would be a lot easier to sew together animal skins to tan them and sew them together than it would to weave large pieces of cloth. And so awnings for shops, uh, military tents, those were all made out of animal skins. And so that was always a trade in demand. He could set up shop in any town and make money. I think that we see in Paul a broadly educated man with a lot of facets to his life. And every one of these facets he has denied and suppressed so that he could express this zealotry for Judaism. We'll see that run headlong into Jesus' plan tomorrow. Thank you for joining me for Five Good Men.